Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Good afternoon to you. My name's John O'Cassid. This is the Warm and Toasty Club online memory afternoon, episode 61. How's life treating you out there? It's a bit dark here, so we're in artificial lighting to meet you and greet you today. I hope you're well. hope your Friday's going good. It's raining here in Colchester, so bring it all indoors and join us. Um, what we got for you today? We've got a lovely show coming up. We have our memory of the week. As always, I'm planting a seed for you to think about. Is your favourite gardening memories of Monty Don, of Alan Titchmarsh, of Percy Frower, um, and your own garden? What do you remember of gardening when you were younger? And remember, with all of these memories, younger is yesterday or before. So you've got a bit of time. Have a think about that. Gardening memories. We've got the retro raffle, of course. Two questions, two virtual prizes. We've got some uh, memories, some interesting facts about Dave Winfield. He's back, Dave from Wivenhoe. Um, we've got the lovely Matthew Crampton coming up. He's going to be singing three songs this afternoon. And we have got Ice Lolly of the Week is back and it's gone all modernised. What can I tell you? You'll have to hang around and find out. Modernised Ice Lolly of the Week. I can't believe it. We've got Jeanette's Poem of the Week. And we have Tom Hardy and Jeanette Lyons. Let's see if I can find them on my screen and my undergarments. There they are. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Marvellous. Blooming marvellous. And you, Tom? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you, How thank are you. you. John yeah, I'm all right this week. Um, yeah, I mustn't grumble and I can't complain. So uh, usually I just talk about the weather instead. It's been lovely. We've had a good week. We've had a good run, a very hot weather with a bit of uh, rain. With that hot weather and this rain comes, if you have a garden or you have a little window box, it grows like mad, doesn't it? After these little thunderstorms that we've been having. It grows like mad, it does. So we're having a gardening afternoon. Woo! <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm good. We had the strimmer out. We've had a strimmer out. We've got a new strimmer, Tom. Yeah, and in one day, one reel was used up. Ooh. Um, we bought this strimmer because online the review says it's the Chuck Norris of strimmers. <laughs> Ooh, and like, it one. was a brilliant review, and it says you've got to call it Mr. Norris because it annihilates anything. And if you've got a patchy <laughs> ground where there's just a little bit of grass coming up, you don't want to use it on that because it will just be dirt after this is finished with it. Um, so it's really quite strong, it sounds an electric impressive. one. It sounds impressive. It yeah. is impressive, but one reel a day, that's, uh, we can't keep up that habit. It's that's quite expensive it. then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> That or we're going to need like a, a metal reel that you put around it, soft metal. Um, yes, metal. yes, yes, yes. Gardening, gardening talk all day long today. Let's kick off. Let's kick off, people. Are you all right out there? Let me just check. Hello, peeps, says Keith. Hi, everyone, says Kim. Hi, everyone, says Carol. Well, hi to you as we start the retro raffle. It's the retro raffle. It's coming to your screen. It's the retro raffle, never has been seen. It's the retro raffle, and it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Oh, yeah, it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Retro raffle, Facebook Live. <laughs> Yeah, 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 indeed, John. Oh, my lad, as I often say to myself when I get up in the morning, mind you, I've been thinking about banning mirrors. I think they're wrong, aren't they? You know, unless you have, yeah, no, mirrors are wrong. You should have only the ones that are at the fair where they make you look really long. <laughs> they're the only sort of mirrors you should have, I think. So I'm banning That's mirrors. The one that makes me look round. No, that's the one, that's the kind you don't want. No, that's fine, because I know it's one that makes me look around. I don't really look that shape. Ah, 
Oh, right. And, and yeah. who would look in a mirror as soon as they wake up? Surely nobody. Well, I just look up and it's there for me. <laughs> 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 oh, hello, sweetheart. You're there again. You've survived the night. Um, You've got a whole ceiling, haven't you? I think. Yes. yes. <laughs> a disco ball also yeah. gives me a little bit of inflection. But I think that's kind of nice for your face when, when you have, if you lay down and somebody takes a picture, all your wrinkles go. It all kind of, you know, falls. Oh, no. All your jowls go behind your ears. <laughs> No, it doesn't I mean, work. I would do yeah. that. In fact, um, from now on, any pictures. Could we do the show? <laughs> could we do the show up there? Up there. Get the camera up That'd there. That would be nice. <laughs> you could do that. that. Yeah, Don't Tom you. could arrange it. He yeah, knows how to put a camera you? somewhere uh, oh, unbeknown. Tom the techie. <laughs> Tom the techie. Hi, oh. Christine. Uh, oh, he's on the move. Hello, says hello. Christine. Hope you're well. Yep, we're fine, Chris. Hope you and Brian are good. Jenny Lifko says, hello, everyone. Hi, Jenny. Michelle, Michelle Newbury says, hi, everyone. Hope everyone is keeping well. We are, and I hope you are all well, Michelle. Um, nice to see you. Steve I saw, Brady. Michelle. I saw Michelle the other day. Did you? Did you? Was she with Anne? She was. They were in the castle oh, park. Oh. Good. Michelle, Marbelle, Sunday, Monkey, Vendre, Bien, on some <laughs> Something like that. Are the actual words, Jono? They yes, that, exactly. Actual they actual probably friend. are. I think you're Especially fine. Especially the monkey bit. Just Yeah. <laughs> Um, Steve Brady from America, he's in North Carolina. He says, You can never buy a mirror that is unused. It's true. Well, unless you're uh, a mirror maker. And then, even then, yeah, you can't sell it because you've already looked in it. It's so true. Oh, the facts that are coming out, these are really good stuff. We should have had a mirror week, shouldn't we? Um, Thomas, Tom Green. Hi, Tom. Afternoon, all he says. Hi. Jan Lehman. Hi, Jan. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you, Jan. Right. Retro raffle. Well, I've had a word because it's gardening week. I've had a word with um, Dirty Barry and he says what he can do is he's taking up a new sort of thing. He's doing um, garden makeovers. He said, you know, like you used to have the one. I don't know what it was called. The one with Alan Titchmarch and Charlie Dimmock, where they change things like mm. in about an hour. Garden makeover or something like that. He can do those, but he only has half an hour he's going to commit to it because he's very busy with stuff. So he's given me um, – he says it's an after picture. I, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. I think he's just added a keep off the grass where there's not a lot of grass to it. I mean, it could be an after picture. And he says also he's doing lawns. Here's one he'd done earlier, <laughs> um, which I think is quite fetching. So you could win in one of those prizes. Oh, he did do another one. He said this was a bit of a rush job, but he was quite pleased with it. <laughs> <laughs> and he could come around and do your garden, your balcony, or your window box. He, I think stick with window boxes with his work. Um, if you get the question right. And we've gone with, because uh, it's a gardening theme this week, we've gone with relatively easy questions, essentially. Um, here's the first one. What plant takes its name from the Italian phrase for beautiful women? Is it A, hyacinth, B, belladonna, C, maradona, or D, donna kebab? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, Tom, Tom Green, ground force. Ground force, they will ground remember force. Tom nice. Green. Yeah, he knows his TV show starring Alan nice. Titchmarsh. You should have him on standby just to... Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. probably knows Charlie the Builder, who you don't see anymore. Charlie, not Charlie, what's his name? Charlie, it was Charlie Dimmock. His name Tommy. is Tom. Tommy, no, Walsh. Tommy Walsh. Yeah. Tommy Walsh, yeah. He was on yeah. something the other day, actually. I can't remember what. It was just on TV, some, I don't know. He was quite scary, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> there was something about him that you can imagine him working as a bailiff or something. Oh, no, I quite <laughs> liked security him. Security guard. He nice, never scared me. No. A, we did me. It was quite tough. Oh. I think my then, big brother Paul did some work with him. It was my, oh, it was my brother that invented um, decking with fake grass, grass deck. So, and they worked together. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> that sounds lovely. Grass deck. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit like what Dirty Barry did. Deck yeah. with an e on the end. Grass deck. E. <laughs> Jenny Lifko, she says I wouldn't let him anywhere near my garden. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's, one? That's not Tommy Walsh. That's probably Dirty Barry. 
if you want a nice blue lawn, look, look what we can do for you in that picture on the bottom right there. Jenny, that could be nice. So let's see what they're answering. Jenny's going B. Keith's going B. Christine's going B. And Kim's going B. You are all correct. The answer was, of course, what plant takes its name from the Italian phrase for beautiful women. It was, of course, Belladonna. I haven't got a picture of that, but I will be selling, sending Dirty Barry around. I've got all your addresses. He'll, <laughs> he'll come and give you – well, he won't give you a quote. He probably just does the work while you're sleeping. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Is it me you're looking for? There's something in your eyes, or oh, I haven't got a clue. Let me start by saying I love you. Right, that's the first one. We've got one more question for you in our Garden Week special. And um, to win the prize, where is it? Daddy Barry's he's doing another sideline. Oh, I've got a delay there. No, that was me. I just switched my phone on. To warm and testy, and oh, I, I had see. to sound up. Sorry, that's all right. <laughs> me out. I don't like listening to my voice. I don't know how you look cope. I really don't. I don't like listening to my voice. We, we block you out. <laughs> Got a filter. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, he's he, he's put another sideline on the go. He's doing um, Monty Don memorabilia, as Monty <laughs> Don really is, and this is Monty Don's. Um, oh. This is a coffee cup. <laughs> This is Monty Don before he's had his makeup done. Um, he got uh, he got in there early and got a picture of him in the garden. <laughs> he didn't know the cameras were going to be on him. Took it. He's put it on a coffee cup, and you could win one of those coffee cups now of Monty Don. Or he actually got, got teeth missing. Yeah, because that's what happens before the cameras roll. <laughs> and they he just lops them in. Pop a little tooth in. Yeah, yeah. Puts his false teeth in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rosanna. She you says, hello, everyone. I think everybody knew that. I thought that. I everyone knew that. about that. Uh -huh. It's good for you to join us, Rosanna. Yeah, I thought everyone knew about um, Auntie Do, as they call him in his cups, in, in Barry's cups. He calls him Auntie Do because <laughs> he run out of letters. <laughs> <laughs> if you go around the side, it still just says Auntie Do. <laughs> and to, <laughs> to, <laughs> show, 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 show. To win that stunning, stunning prize, um, you need to answer this question. Which television presenter and gardener owns a garden in Herefordshire called Longmeadow? Is it A, Alan Titchmarsh, B, Charlie Dimmock, C, Auntie Do, or otherwise, a.k.a. Monty Don, or D, Bill Oddie? What would it be out there, people? I have absolutely no idea do you not watch gardening shows then I don't do you watch anything literally i watch youtube <laughs> tiktok okay. are Thank you on are you on the run from the bbc license fee people <laughs> they're, they're going to come around in the van no no, no i've got everything i've got a smart tv that does internet and stuff and i've got amazon prime i've got netflix i've got all those things i just don't know how to work the tv i was trying to show a friend of mine something on Spotify this morning or showing play and stuff and music. Couldn't even get Spotify to work. What wow. Lorraine drives. Lorraine drives the television. I oh, don't she's the do. queen of the um remote control scene, is she? Gets a lot of practice as well. So she knows what Ooh. she's doing. Oh, bitch is so early in the no, day. No, no, no. She doesn't like going out. She doesn't okay. like going out and wear <laughs> <laughs> still I'm not sure if that's bad. Yet. Um <laughs> The answers are coming in. Keith's going A. Kim's going C. Uh, Christine's going A. Excuse me. I've got a, a burp developing. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us what the answers were again? Because I've forgotten. They're saying A and stuff. And yes. I, I so it's A. a Alan Titchmarsh. B. Charlie Dimmock. C. Monty Don. Or D. Bill Oddie. Right. Goody, goody. Yum, yum. thinking that, yeah, I can't help thinking that Bill Oddie is... is uh, a red herring, shall we say, because he's in he does the bird watching thing, doesn't he? He's spring never been watch. called that before. He does do and he don't do spring watch, he did do oh. for a while. He is a twitcher, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he does like watch bird birds. So well, they just filmed him in his shed, didn't they? And he just sort of talk about birds and that for a while. Oh, did he? Oh, it's oh, really good, no. it's a really great show. Oh, <laughs> so you used to have a, a shed show, didn't you, Jono? Yes, yeah, Snippet I World. When I first met you, you were doing. Stuff from your shed, it was rather lovely. 
Uh, no, it was for... <laughs> yeah, it was. I was doing Snippet World for a while. And I probably wouldn't have done the Warm and Toasty Club if it wasn't for Snippet World. Um, there you go. I couldn't get out. I was stuck in. What do I do? Make a show in my garden shed. Yeah, I love I love a garden shed. Yeah, there's a guy I know, um, um, Uncle Wil Wilco. He um, he does shed of the of the year. I think they call it. It's on Channel Four and now. Oh no, uh, I think I saw something a few years ago about that, mm. and there were some amazing things. God, they they were they'd made things look like um, a Hobbit house in the Shire. Um, just you know, some of them look like beach huts, and yeah, feet, in fact, my, my shed was referred to the other day as looking like a summer house. But you know, wow, obviously I'm very posh, out. so my garden shed is beautiful and looks like a summer house. Yeah, yeah. But is, what colour is your shed now? You've got a new shed. John. Well, I had Leaning Tower of Shed, which was Snippet World Shed, uh, Snippet Shed, as it was called, where I used to make music, and that was the Leaning Tower of. of um, shed Good. because it um had a um was it a buddlier a buddlier grew underneath it sort of thing just oh. tipped it up so we knocked that down and then the other one which has been there a long time now that's that's a nice blue it's a it's a gentle blue yes yes um but i don't do music in there no it's got like it's got a lot of spiders in there um some old cobwebs and probably some top trumps games from the 80s and 90s <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Um, Christine's going A, Rosanna's going B, Karen's going A, and she adds, hello, it's free kisses, Karen. Oh my god, free kisses. Ah you see, you can you, you, you put free kisses. I've all right, here it is. I was a one kisses man. I was a one kiss man. And you know, one kiss from me, that's a lot, you know, to most people. <laughs> I've started moving towards two kisses, but if I go towards three. You know, like my family, some of them give four kisses. I'm not going there. How would I come back from four kisses? Afterwards, they say, you've only given us two kisses this time. They're going to be disappointed. So, You sent me a message the other day and it had two kisses on. And I notice it because it's you. Yeah, I actually I know. count the kisses. See? And I was, so, I was so impressed that you've done two kisses. <laughs> I must have done something right. <laughs> I don't know if it was that. I don't know if I've just. I, you would have done something right. I shouldn't say that. You would have. You always do things right. But I've graduated to two, and I'm 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 at the crossroads. I don't know whether I've gone too far. Because <laughs> if I go back, <laughs> if I send you one now, what are you going to do with it? You're going to say oh, you're I know I've disappointed. Done you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be re bereft, aren't you? Absolutely I bereft. I am. Whereas oh, where, yeah. when I send you a message, there's no kisses ever, yeah. and you're you're fine, never, aren't ever, you? Ever. You're yeah, fine. Yeah, and you were, yeah, yeah, you yeah, you're fine with that. And I always feel funny if I put a kiss at the end of Tom's one because I know he ain't going to send me one back. <laughs> do you do it? And I've done it before. I won't lie. There's a few people I know <laughs> they don't. They don't. I got one with four from him the other day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a new chop. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, imagine I, I, I sent you four. I do one Tom. kiss if I don't know them very well. Two if I know them quite well. Three if I really like them. <laughs> yeah, because after a while, Can't after while three. people will be saying like, you know, if you give out two or three to people you hardly know, they'd be thinking he or she's they're a bit loose, aren't they? You know, they're a bit loose <laughs> with it. <laughs> They'll think that you're now on a date with them. In well, my experience. <laughs> that's the thing i've had too many stalkers if i've given two kisses they think yeah, it means something what happens. they call it a relationship i'm like come <laughs> on <laughs> um keith says x o x kiss o x or oxo oh. hugs and kisses when we can yeah. the o's are hugs aren't they oh they're hugs are they mm. yeah is it an oxo not an oxo hug like is it not rap well, it's a... kiss hug kiss or hug kiss hug Oh, oh, right. I thought it had something to do with Oxo cubes and you sprinkle it all <laughs> over yourself and you have a big naked cuddle. <laughs> That's something naked. else. That's in the naked Oxo cube club that I forgot. With your mirror on the ceiling. Jono, I'm getting worried about you. you mirror need, on the ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, have sorry. Down. yeah, no, I don't get out much. <laughs> and that's been delayed by another month. But there we go. Um probably just as well covered in Oxo. I mean you don't... <laughs> give yourself oh, time for a shower. I don't mind if it was Oxo. If it was Marmite, I'd be dead against it. You know, or Vegemite. Do you remember that? Vegemite. What's that all about? 
Like Marmite, anyway. isn't it? No, it's not Marmite. No. It's Vegemite, isn't it? It's the same, isn't it? No, it's more Vegemite. Australian, mate. Yeah, no, You've got to have some it's... Vegemite on your bottom, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, no, I don't know where I'm going with that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> John O. And Bree. Family <laughs> show and all that. Family <laughs> you know, show. Yeah, no. Chris, Christine oh. says, I sent three kisses, one for each of you. Mm. Pow, pow, pow. Thank you, Christine. That's lovely. That's nice. Mm. That's nice. Because John Sage sends one. He knows what he's doing. He says, hello. And he's just a man that gives one kiss. That's strong. <laughs> that shows a man of strength who doesn't mind touching his feminine side of an evening. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. I've got the, I've got the two today. Um, Have you changed your medication, John? I've, just I've not taken any yet. That's all the thing. That's the I've, oh, God. I've got to calm down. Zen, Zen. <laughs> um, Keith it's just that Monty Wolfie. Don picture, isn't it? I think. Oh, that yeah, Monty, Monty Don picture. <laughs> Monty Do, he's, he's really setting me off. The answer to the question, which television presenter and gardener owns a garden in Hertfordshire called Longmeadow, of course, is C, Monty Don, as featured on Gardener's World. We love you really, Monty. Um, he's a gorgeous babe of a man. I have it's... heard that women refer to him as, as the thinking woman's crumpet. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely very much crumpet. I mean, cool. You put things in, well, you just get reviews of him. People love him. They love him. They like Alan Titchmarch, but Alan Titchmarch, you know, he's he's not super sexy. I'm sorry, ladies, if you think he is, or gentlemen. Um, Maybe that could be um, that could be a thing, couldn't it? We could see who's the sexiest gardener. Sexiest gardener, yeah, sexiest gardener of the week. Yeah, yeah. Know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Gardener that's of the week. Gardener, it's the memory of the week to start with, which is about <laughs> gardens. Memory, memory, memory of the week. So, yeah, sexiest gardener. Um, that would be good. Um, Monty Don versus Alan Titmarsh. I think Monty's going to mash him up, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. He's going to mash him into the ground. Um. Our theme of the week and our memory of the week is gardening memories. Do you have gardening memories of your own when you were younger? Not just perhaps it's television presenters or perhaps it's your own. Mine was I grew up on a council estate in Hackney. Um, I say council estate just to show you my working class credentials. Um, and my mum taught me how to, to, to plant things and garden. And the first thing I planted were pansies. What was nice about the pansies, they were a colourful show, a nice bedding plant, but they would come back every year. You didn't have to do anything, and they'd come back. Every... We had a little garden, very small, 20 foot maybe, if, if that, that backed onto the railway. And the railway used to go past the train, past the back of the house. That's my earliest gardening memory. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> How about you, Jeanette? <laughs> Um, I kind of very vague memories of the garden when I was little. We lived in a little village in Buckinghamshire. And uh, I remember a, a very small paddling pool. You know, we used to blow up the rings around it. And um, there'd be four of us squashed in this little paddling pool. And I don't know, getting getting a bit cross because there wasn't enough room and somebody was splashing and whatever. I remember a, a green metal swing in the garden that wasn't, secured properly so we weren't allowed to go too oh. high because the the feet would lift up out of the ground of the swing and i remember some uh pretty little flowers that didn't need any maintenance and they were called sweet williams and they were nice oh yeah i've heard of them that's all i can really remember about garden that's enough isn't it nowadays just to add we weren't in the garden we were out <laughs> we were off in the woods and stuff so. i mean i'm not being funny in saying this but you said online the other day didn't you on the show you're looking forward to doing gardening in your bikini I did it. I did it on all day Sunday. I what is it? Gardening. The garden is looking lovely. Why is it? The, does the bikini make the garden grow better or, or is it no, make it feel freer? I tend not to be able to sit down and relax very often. I'm, I'm quite a getting on with it person. Yeah, yeah, I'm busy. And so it's kind of like working on my tan okay. while I'm gardening. So I'm outside and the sun's getting that, put loads of factor, factor 30 on. Uh, with a wooden spoon so I can reach my back now and um yeah so I, that's it did actually because I, yeah, I was home alone and the gardening was all done and I thought right just stop 
just stopped for a little while and I got the sun lounger out and, and some towels and and I laid down and I thought oh you know I'll spend a couple of hours actually sunbathing and um yeah I probably managed 20 minutes that wasn't bad for me not bad <laughs> I don't look very brown my sister is brown as a berry and um I was wearing trousers yesterday with a, a space between my boots and where the trousers ended and all you could see was this you know really bright white of my ankles I don't tan easily, but I don't burn either because I use lots of cream. People probably thought you had a nice turn up. Um. <laughs> yeah, <only> white turn up. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. Thank you, Jeanette. Tom, any memories of gardening? Are you a gardening type of person now? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm restricted to cutting hedges and moving stuff that, you know, that people don't want. Well, my wife doesn't want. So I just cut things. I do the hedge out the front. That's that's my job. That's your duty. Yeah. Nice. Otherwise, I'm not really very nice good. You got nice no, plants in your front garden. Lots chop, of them. There are. Yeah. I chop bits off occasionally. That's that's my I've job. Heard, I've heard that yeah. about you. Yeah. I thought you had. Yeah, you're the chopper, <laughs> locally known as the chopper. <laughs> um, that's that's nice. It's nice. You've got all got different jobs. Christine says Brian will join us soon. He is mending the gazebo that got broke. With the heavy rain, it was heavy rain last last mm. night. Um, hope he can fix it, Chris. Jenny Lifko says, well, "I remember we had some geese and they chased us, so my mother got rid of them." Oh, that's uh, interesting, there, Jenny. The geese that that were. Um, oh, there's a what was that film? No, I thought there was a film called Santa Back. The geese have flown, but no, it's not that at all. Wild, um, wild yeah. goose. Yes, yeah, were they like pets or were they just they used to? Guard, guard geese. Yeah, because they are can be quite vicious, can't they? Mm. Mm. They can. Kim, she says, hello, Kim. Um, she said, I grew up in Dagenham. My parents had a nice big garden and I used to love helping with my dad growing vegetables. And Jeanette, I had a green metal swing in my garden um, too. You, I too used to love going high to all the pegs would come out of the ground, lol. <laughs> Those were the days, happy memories. Ah, oh, like great big swing. I remember when the kids were little, we used to, there was a, it come from a book, but we'd, I'd say, I'd push you really high and then your feet would touch the clouds and you'd say, look, is that a little bit of blue on your feet there where it's touched oh, the clouds? Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, that's how soft I am. Yep. Brenda says, hi, Johnny, Jeanette and Tom. Good to see you. I Better late than never. Yes, Brenda. Tell us about your, your gardening memories. Brenda. What is that near, Mrs? <laughs> How's your hair? Have you had your hair done, Bren? Um, John Sage, um, he's a very nice gentleman. He says, as a kiddie, I was given some radish seeds to grow. They came out tasty. Mmm, nice bit of radish. We got Are you some all growing huge, veg? Yeah, we got some huge radishes from the um, veg box last week. They were very nice. I grew some. I grew some. I, let, I had a planter and I left it just come up recently. And there were these massive ones, but I think they might be turnips. I'm not sure because they don't <laughs> plant in radish. They're white, but they no, they were red, big red things. They could have been like beetroot. Yeah, no, it weren't beetroot because <laughs> <laughs> they keep coming up every year, and you can never believe. Oh. Yeah, my um, spinach comes up every year, and I don't plant it, and it just grows like trees. But I have planted some potatoes on Sunday. Oh, nice courgettes, nice. courgettes and tomatoes. And peppers. A bit late for potatoes, and... aren't you? I know, I know. I just didn't have enough time. Our, our builders were they, they had their potatoes in ages ago. Yeah, everybody did. He gave I, bought us mine. A... I bought my seed potatoes ages ago. Yeah. Just didn't get I, I kind of kept thinking I would grow them in um potato bags, you know, but I, I ran out of compost and I kept thinking, Oh, I must go and buy some compost and oh, didn't do it. And then somebody suggested, why don't you just plant them in your vegetable patch that's only got two courgette plants in? Like, Sounds sensible. I should do yeah. that, but it meant a lot of digging, and I did that on Sunday. Yeah, oh, I, they're I, out, and top, whether top they grow or tan. not, I don't know. Top but up your tan, can't it? I did. I yeah, did, yeah. yeah I, I Look used, how brown I. Am. I've grown potatoes in bags for a few years, but then my, last year we thought it's it's all them months of caring for it because they get big plants, and then yeah. you have one or two meals with it, and you know they were nice. But I absolutely love growing salads, tomatoes, yeah. cucumbers, um, particularly tomatoes. I love homegrown tomatoes. It just got, tastes the best. You got a couple of um, plants yesterday, actually, which were something yeah. grew for us. 
um, and we picked them up yesterday. Are they already black, big and black, established? They were quite big. Yeah, black, I've got black I've Russians. Got black Russians. I've got, I've got a couple of them coming Ooh, up. Nice. Lovely. Oh, gorgeous. They're gorgeous. my favourite. Yeah, I like them. Um, sorry. Getting, sorry. No, it's all right. I like the Italian ones. I think they're called uh, Marmand. Um, big, big, juicy things. Oh, they're gorgeous. Gorgeous. I should read some of these comments. Um, Jenny says, I also remember a massive pig getting in the garden and feasting on apples in the compost pit. <laughs> Brenda's had her hair done, hairdo done. She said, got wet in rain, sat dripping in hairdressers. Oh, <laughs> you're breaking my heart there, Brenda. And when you um, come out and your hair's all lovely... And then it gets rained on. Or yeah, I'm not sure if she pretty. was dripping, going to the bar, uh, yeah. barbers, to the hairdressers. Women don't go to barbers today. Keith says, we had a massive council house garden with eight tenths used for vegetables and fruits. Always remember competing with the wasps for the Queen Victorian plums. Oh, gorgeous. And Karen <laughs> loves salad too. Keep those memories coming in of uh, your garden memories. Uh, we should go. Uh, we're chatting too much, so we should go over to um, our interesting facts. Some interesting facts about you, what you've done in your life. Some interesting facts about you, the places you've been, the people you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a few weeks ago Jeanette Lyons the lady on the top right she met Dave Winfield in Wivenhoe and he kindly sent a few stories through um, he's been convalescing after having a little operation so we hope you're feeling better Dave if you are listening in now or in the future um, and we were just I was just going to play the second story um, which was um, I think the winter of 47 anything to add Jeanette Lyons no, just that um, I hope you're feeling a lot better, Dave, and um, I will speak to you again soon. There we go. That's Jeanette's going to take her off. Here's Dave from Wivenhoe. My name is Dave Winfield, and I belong to the Writers' Company, a creative writing group in Wivenhoe, led by Petra McQueen. My story is about growing up in the 1940s and 50s, I've called it Abbey Boy. This part is about the winter of 1947. There was an unusual light in the room when I awoke on Tuesday the 21st of January 1947. Had I overslept, surely it should still be dark. Despite the coats piled on the bed, I was chilled to the bone and there was a glacial feel in the unheated room. My sister Jean usually added warmth to the other end of our single bed, but was standing at the window. Come and look, she called. My bare feet struck the cold wooden floorboards and I joined her at the window. She drew back the thin curtains and breathed heavily on the rime that had formed on the inside of the glass. She scraped a peephole until I could see enough to reveal a completely transformed landscape. A mantle of white had been thrown over the familiar fields, filling the ditches, even drifting up over the hedges, forming the folds of a huge white cloak. I was mesmerised. Never had we seen snow like this. Trees were bent over into strange shapes, with the weight of snow, bending the lowest branches close to the ground. Nothing moved on the road outside. No birds sang. A thick blanket of silence had settled over our strange new world. There would be no school today. Breakfast was a hurried affair. I was six years old and Jean, three years older, was anxious to get outside. For goodness sake, stand still, Mum snapped, as she has applied Vaseline to our knees, faces and any exposed skin in an effort to perfect us from the knife-sharp wind. 
This morning she piled on the clothes, except for my short trousers that I wore winter and summer until I was 11 years old. The best we could manage to keep my feet dry were plastic bags, two pairs of socks and Wellington boots, knowing that they would never cope with the deep snow. On my head was the dreadful misshapen hand-knitted balaclava, which I hated but would be forced to wear for months to come. She was a very keen knitter, and with the best of intentions added to our meagre supply of clothes with ill-fitting jumpers, hats and gloves, many reworked from outgrown items. My gloves were attached by elastic to the cuffs of my coat. To lose them would be a serious matter. Jean opened the door to find to our delight it was snowing again as we took our first steps into this strange new world. We gingerly crossed the for once empty road, hearing for the first time a creaking, squeaking sound virgin snow makes as it was compressed beneath our wellies. We climbed the steep bank opposite and surveyed our usually so familiar playground, now unrecognisable, transformed into an arctic sparkling wonderland. Without the ditches and hedgerows, all our landmarks were gone. Our task was simple. This chance could not be missed, and we must simply build the best snowman ever. Taller than my sister, he stood on the top of the bank, guarding our house and the road below, seeing everything and everybody with his cold nuggy eyes. His carrot nose poked out from under one of Dad's old hats, and Mum's not-so-old scarf was round around his neck. Little did we know that he would stand his ground, become a fixture, greeting us every morning until March that year surviving one of the worst winters on record. Dave Winfield from Wivenhoe. Thank you very much, Dave. That was a lovely, very creative, um, very um, clear memory of the winter of 47. Um, what a lovely chap he is. Um, I'd like to meet him one day. I hope I will. I'm sure I will. Um, Thanks for getting that for our roving reporter, Jeanette Lyons, the lady in the bottom I'll, left. She I'll goes around the country. choose a few other people to, to uh, interview. Yes, yes. Um, thanks, Dave. Get well soon with the, um, is it, was his leg, was it, or his hip? His hip. Yeah. His hip. Get well with the hip soon, Dave. Thanks very much. Look forward to hearing more stories from you in the future, hopefully. Um, and hello to Will. Good afternoon, says Will. Thank you, Will, for joining us. Rosanna says, my sister and me fighting was a memory over the garden broom and who got to sweep the path. Um, but instead it ends up going through our dad's shed. <laughs> Smash. Um, Christine says, love Dave's stories. He makes them come to life. Um, he does indeed. He speaks so well, doesn't he? Uh, John says, lovely. Uh, Keith says, fantastic memory. Uh, Brenda says, that was so interesting to listen to. You hear this, Dave? People say, um, yeah, Jenny says, great, Dave. I remember that winter too. Oh, do you, Jenny? Wow. Wow. Um, I thought you was a spring chicken, Jenny. Um, uh, well, you are to us, always spring chicken. Um, that was lovely. But we're chatting away, so I should welcome our guest, really. I think he's just about hanging in there. Let's see if we can find the one and the only Matthew Crampton. Are you there, sir? Hello. How are you, folks? Good, good. We're very good. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. I've been away from you for a few months, and I yes. must no admit I've noticed a few changes, you know, from yeah. listening to the show so far today. It's got a bit ruder, a bit ruder, I think. And that's, Jono, that's Jono. <laughs> Jono, I must say, the first rule of the Naked Oxo Cube Club is we never talk about the Naked Oxo Cube Club. So I have to have a word with the membership secretary. That's why they didn't give me a full membership. It was only a, a, a temporary Yeah, stop, stop now. Quit while you're ahead. Don't keep digging, John. Oh, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I've got to introduce you to my friend. Um, I've been living with him and his friend as well over the last few months because I had a, a new ankle put in in March. 
So wow. I've been wandering around on crutches a lot for the last few weeks, which is actually all right because people smile at you and old <laughs> people, old people on the buses, they give you seats and that's very nice as well. The, uh, when we was talking off air before, you were saying, because I didn't know they could sort of replace um, ankles or put new bits in and you were saying it's quite a, uh, a revolutionary in the first phase of yeah. trying something completely new? Well, they reckon that the technology for ankles is 30 years behind hips and 20 years behind knees because there aren't many needed. And so also, if you think about it, the ankle is half the size of the knee in, in, in width, but it takes all the weight of the body. So it's quite a, an intricate thing to, to create. The implant they've put in is only a few centimetres wide. Um, but it's made of titanium, so it's very strong, at least. Right. Um, so, yes, it's quite a, a risky operation, I think. Uh, but they're getting better, and it takes a long time. Because when my mum, who's 83, she had a new hip, and she was playing tennis in about a few weeks, it seemed. Um, whereas <laughs> I, I won't be. <laughs> no. No, no, that's not going to be happening for a long time. Oh, bless you. Well, we're glad that you're back, even if you have to sit more than you'd probably like to. Um, and oh, I can right. still sing and talk and speak nonsense, so that's well, all yeah. fine. Oh, actually, hold on a minute. You've switched. Okay, You've got wait. your screen the right way round. Since we last talked, <laughs> my world has righted itself. I was back to front half an hour ago, and I found this little button, like something out of Alice in Wonderland, and I pressed it, and suddenly everything was the right way round. Yeah, oh, you look what? worse, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it my bad side now? Yeah, you you've got your bad side now. Damn, damn. Well, I might switch <laughs> back for the next one and we'll see, see, do a poll. <laughs> you probably had a word with Frank from the uh, Naked Oxo Cube Club, didn't you? To get it. Jono, two warnings. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Two Three warnings. Strikes you out. don't want to know what the punishments are. <laughs> I kind of yeah, do, don't. but I won't push it. You'll get blackballed. <laughs> Let's Ed. get Matthew singing, shall we, ladies oh. and gentlemen? Should we? Are, Are you, you sure you want this? No, I'm not sure, but it's something we have to do. Um, we're very glad he's back with us. We're very glad he's recuperating after being a little bit unwell with his ankle. But he's here. He's here. He's live today. Um, he's a real little puppet, he is, and he's got his banjolele, is it? I've got my little banjolele in me hand. That's it. And he's going to sing songs. So we get rid of ourselves as we welcome, once again, he's back, Matthew Crampton, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I thought I would give you a medley of choruses. So please, sing along. And uh, you'll know most of these, but I've added a few old music hall songs in, which are quite fun. See if you can spot them. Are you ready? Are you ready to sing? I can hear you. Good. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are grey. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine, or maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. But I love London, so have a banana. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of you. Wherever I go, I get a funny feeling inside of me, just walking up and down. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. Here's an old one, Victorian song. Don't have any more, Mrs. Moore. Mrs. Moore, please don't have any more. The more you have, the more you want, they say, but enough is as good as a rest any day. If you have any more, Mrs. Moore, you'll not get through your own front door. Too many double chins gives a lady double chins, so don't have any more, Mrs. Moore. Able eyes, eyes. Every morning you greet me, small and wise. 
me and cry. You look happy to me, me, blossom of snow. May you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. of ice, let my homeland forever. Meanwhile, back in Britain. Who do you think? You are kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think we're on the run. We are the boys who will stop your little games. We are the boys who will make you think again. Cause who do you think? You are kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think old England's done. Mr. Brown goes off to town on the 821. He comes home in the evening and he's ready with his gun. Cause who do you think? You are kidding, Mr. Hitler. If you think old England's, if you think old England's, if you think old England's gone. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking then. Maybe clap in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow you'll find the sun comes shining through. If you still smile. And now back to World War One. See who remembers this one, Johnny. Hold your hand out, you naughty boy. Hold your hand out, you naughty boy. Last night in the pale moonlight, I saw ya, I saw ya. You were walking after dark with a nice girl in the park. And you told her you'd never kissed a girl before. Hold your hand out, you naughty boy. I'll get that chord in the end. And now, to conclude, as always, let's go back to my heroes, Eric and Ernie. Bring me sunshine, I with your smile. Bring me laughter, all the while. In this world where we live, there should be more happiness, so much joy you can bring to each brand new bright tomorrow make me happy through the years never bring me any tears let your arms be as wide as the sun from up above bring me joy bring me sunshine bring me love bring me joy Bring me sunshine, bring me love. One more time. Bring me joy, bring me sunshine, bring me love. Thank you. Yes, Matthew, lovely medley. Oh, I could hear you singing. Yes, I bet you could. Could you really? No, I can't. Oh. We had a guest the other day that could hear me rustling things, which was oh, weird. Right. I heard sweet yeah. sounds. I assumed it was you. <laughs> <laughs> it was that was really nice. Oh, thank you. It was. It's good to hear those uh, medleys of those songs again. Put your hand out, naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you know that one? Um, you heard well, it only um, my wife had, had sung it. That her dad used to sing it to her and her brother. I think um, when it, they were little. <laughs> It's amazing how often these old songs do get passed down through the family. Uh, so when I do a music hall gig, because if I'm playing an old, you know, to senior citizens, most of them were young in the 50s and the 40s. So they won't know these songs because they go back to Victorian times and World War One. But still, they're often in the back of the mind. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Brenda says, having a sing song here, not heard Mrs. Moore's song before. Ah, that's quite a rare one, but I just love it so much, that one. Well, let me tell you what people are saying. Jenny sends applause, as does Brenda. Keith says, bravo. Thank you, Keith. Carol, Carol's having an annoying um, um, situation with her internet working on and off. Um, I'm glad you're still hanging in there, Carol. She says, brilliant as usual, Matthew. Thank you. Christine says, so pleased to see Matthew again. I find him so entertaining. Hope you get well soon. Oh, yeah. thank you. That's a nice quote there, right there. You can put that on a T-shirt. Um, yeah. Kim, Kim says, love all these old songs. Really enjoyed, Matthew. Thank you. And Tony James, uh, hi, Tony, says, excellent. Love the old songs. Appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed that because it's all going to go horribly wrong with my next two songs. It's all down <laughs> here. <laughs> down here, yeah. You're going to start well. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you know like where it. to go, Matthew. Yeah, that's it. You've set a high bar. <laughs> oh, I seem to be having technical problems. Sorry, sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> that's it. See ya. Bye. We love you. We love you. Um, thanks, Matthew. We'll have you back in a moment or two. We'll have Matthew back. We're going to pop off um, and uh, do uh, I Slowly of the Week. We'll see you in a moment. Thank you, sir. That was a good medley. Good medley. So, rushing on, because we were so chatty earlier. All my fault, of course, not Tom or Jeanette. Um, it's Isla yes, Lee. Naughty boy, as that's naughty song boy. <laughs> naughty the boy. boy, I was Isla Lee of the week. Quick, mum, it's the ice cream bag. <laughs> well, lick my chops, it's the Isla Lee of the week. So, Isla Lee of the week, what we've done this week is we've gone all modern. They can still be memories if they didn't happen today. It was in the past, wasn't it? Let me just uh, do a little cover there. Um, the first one up, of course, is Solero. So we're having two big hitters that you'll know from today. I mean, these are both gorgeous. Gorgeous they are. Um, Solero is an ice cream that was first launched by Walls in 1994 in the UK, 95 by HB in Ireland. It was manufactured using a unique process that enabled high quality ice cream to be covered with a soft fruit sorbet. Between 96 and 97, Solero forest fruits, exotic fruits and citrus fruits were launched. Great news for those who like to look after themselves as these contained less than 4% fat. I didn't know that. I need to go to the shop and buy some now. Invented in 1993 by Magnum project engineer, Jerry Campbell, um, Noosa Automation. That can't be his name. Jerry Campbell, Noosa Automation. It could be. It could be kind of like quite a modern name. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Jerry Noosa Automation. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, when he dipped a magnum, as you do, in um, minus 60 um, centigrade extruded product in... Oh, what have I written here? <laughs> he's, he's basically he's dipped it in minus 60 mango juice and then dipped it in minus 190 that's like the real back of the fridge liquid nitrogen where's he where's he finding these things just hanging around the place <laughs> and he's invented it no i done mum i went to the back of the fridge and i dipped it and i got now solero so that's the first one you'll know that solero tom hardy have you had a Solerio, a Solerio in your life? <laughs> I have had a Solerio, yeah. <laughs> what did you find of it? I can't remember what it tastes like, but I have had one, yeah. You can't remember it at all? Uh, yeah, no, I think they're quite nice. Did they have an orange one? Yeah, yeah, they got an orange one, or they did have an orange one. don't know what they do now. Um, but I suppose they're the kind of like the modern version of the Mivi, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all right, yeah. Yeah, I think I preferred. Right. I think I still preferred the old orange movies. So. Okay, I like your um, your vintage charm. Um, I always say that about you. He's got lovely vintage charm. Well, it's those two kisses, isn't it? Oh, I see, yeah, I know. Don't think about four <laughs> kisses in your lifetime. That's all I'm saying. Jeanette, do you like a Solerio? Yes, I have had one before, and um, very nice. In fact, uh, my friend Gary used to get them. I think, and they were lovely. Is that because really you were nice. too poor to get them yourself? No, I was grown up by then. <laughs> but I did. I, do you know what? I, I, my shower this morning, I went for the mango shower gel. Solero. So I probably smell like a Solero. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, that's a coincidence. <laughs> Hold on. Is it scratch and sniff? Scratch and sniff. <laughs> Mango. Mango. Yeah, sounds, sounds nice. Smells delicious. So you smell like Solerio. Oh, 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 oh. I do. I smell like okay. a mango Solero. Exotic. Well, let's, let's, that's gorgeous. A gorgeous uh, product she's been using there. Let's see what's going against. Still, it's quite a small picture. If you can't see it, it's a Magnum. A Magnum is an ice cream lolly kind of choc ice type of thing. Was first de developed in Aarhus, Aarhus, Aarhus in Denmark in the late 80s by Morgans Vi Larsen. He was then tired to I can't get my words out. <laughs> breathe, John, I breathe, John. Then director of Frisco, which was an ice cream make maker. Magnum is a Belgian brand of ice cream and the company's namesake originally developed and produced by Frisco in the Danish city, Argus, as already mentioned. The actor Roger Moore, best known for his portrayal of James Bond, also known as The Saint, famously claimed to have come up with the idea for the Magnum, although Wall's ice cream deny any knowledge of this, saying it is no more than a brilliant story. There we have it. Now, Jeanette, I'm going to go to you first. I've got a feeling you may have tried a Magnum once. Yes, I love Magnums. I like love the ones them. with all the bits all on the outside stuck in the chocolate. And do you know what? When I had a look this morning at um, your notes to saying what um, the ice lolly of the weeks were going to be, and I really wanted a Magnum. I really wanted chocolate. I haven't had chocolate for such a long time mm. that I had to go to the shop and buy potatoes. And I bought a bar of chocolate as well because of Magnum. Wow. Yeah, salted caramel chocolate. Dark. Oh, it's chocolate. different. Dark. Yeah. That's just. Yeah, I, it's diabetic. <laughs> you can't have milk chocolate. You've got to go dark chocolate. Oh, if you're diabetic, you can't. Oh, well. Yeah, but I don't know about the caramel. <laughs> caramel, probably not. Yeah, but, perhaps not. Yeah. But I'm going to have some chocolate after the show. Oh, so you were fan. But yeah, Magnums, I love them because I'm a massive craving for chocolate. Yeah. So. Are you uh, also a, a big fan, Tom? Yeah, I do like a Magnum. Yeah. Do you like probably, the ones with all the bits on the outside? I like the ones. Um, the nuts. Yeah, with the nut. What's um, yeah. is I don't know what they are. What are they? Almond. Is it almond Almonds. ones? Yeah. Oh, yes. The almond ones. Cool. Yeah. I'll be off. I'm just going to the shops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I might pop up to uh, Sainsbury's and buy myself some later. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm, um, drop one round. I, I like the white I like the white chocolate one, they're nice. Uh, the ones really? the ones with the bits in it. White it's a bit like not you've dropped it. Chocolate, is it? No, white chocolate's not proper chocolate. John, what what are you thinking? Tom and I actually agree on this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean we like the same ice yeah. lolly. Yeah. And what's happening here? Yeah, what's I don't know. Here, I don't, I don't know. like this. I don't like this at all. You two agree. <laughs> the universe has changed. There's something yeah. something's gone amiss. Weird. Yeah. Oh, I, I haven't had one probably best part of a year since I was told that I might be a diabetic if I kept having them. Um, I've managed to beat that a little bit, but I've still not had one. But I do find that the ones that have bits on, they're a bit like you've dropped them on a sawdust floor. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, so what would you do? You have the white ones, isn't it? That's it. That's right. Oh. And I'm, oh, well, I need to go and buy some now. This is really <laughs> bad. Doing this research is just so bad for me. You know, biscuits, cakes, ice lollies. I have to try them out, of course. Look, even even Carol and I are agreeing. I mean, you know, what is going wrong? What is going wrong? Carol yeah. saying Magnum every time. Let's see what everybody else is saying. Um, Kim says, love the Solerio. They are very refreshing. Christine's just stating a pure fact and saying Solero. Tony James is a magnum for me. Don't mind the Solerio, but not keen on anything so bad. Um, yep, Carol's magnum. Keith magnum. Kim says, this is a very hard choice today, but I'm going with the magnum because it's covered in chocolate. <laughs> I know that for a while they couldn't put real chocolate in and the freezing process. So I'm not sure. Is it real chocolate nowadays? I'm not sure. Uh, it may be. Uh, they may have bought the technology magnum all the way says thomas green michelle says one vote for magnum and one for solaria solero here we're a split household you need scotty's a defining vote deciding vote i should say brenda oh solero combination of ice lolly and ice cream especially exotic solero 
Irene says Magnum times two. Hi, Irene and Colin. I hope uh, the dent trip to the dentist hasn't put you off your ice lollies. And I hope you're doing good. Roseanne, Rosanna, she's going Magnum. So what would your choice be, ladies and gentlemen? Would you want a Magnum or Solero? It's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. I mean, I'm giving you a really difficult choice here in your life. But Tom's, Tom Hardy has written Magnum four times. Four times, Tom. Five times. <laughs> Six times. Oh, my God. You can never come back from that, Tom. <laughs> you, you can. It's like your kisses. It's you might like be a bit kisses. fat, but I think you can come back. Yeah. <laughs> He's not trying to influence Jeanette's counting at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, trying to confuse her. <laughs> so while we, uh, Jeanette, keeps those votes coming in, um, Skinny Boy Tune says, hello, whilst I consider Solero to be one of my five a day, yes, you are right, Magnum wins every time. Brenda <laughs> says, I think Tom's cheating. He's, he's he, a is. Yeah. he is. He's really cheating. He's not normally like this. He's very excited by Magnums. He might even send everybody three or four kisses later. We'll never know. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no I'm lying. You'll never do that. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> um, well, while Je Jeanette's adding up those uh, scores, keep them coming in, the votes, let's welcome back Mr. Matthew Crampton. Matthew Crampton, how are you, sir? I've got an interesting fact for you about those ice creams. Good. The Give pop band Madness, right, you know them, they wrote a song about the Magnum. Okay. Well, it wasn't actually about the Magnum. It was about the town in Denmark where it comes from, uh, yeah. which is Aarhus, Aarhus, in the middle of our street. <laughs> Aarhus, in the middle of our street. Oh, oh appearing all week. <laughs> no kisses, no kisses. <laughs> so you're going to sing us more songs, but um, what would you vote if you, if you had a vote? Not that you have. Um, it's a no-brainer, actually. It's a magnum, of course it is. Of course it is. Oh, really? I think you do have a vote, just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been voting as a, a, under my various accomplice names anyway for the last two <laughs> minutes, but uh, Tom Hardy particularly. <laughs> 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 I use that when I go on, on fan things. And there's a famous actor called Tom Hardy. Oh, my God. Yes. There is, but there's only one Tom Hardy, and he's on the bottom left of your screen. Well, yes, Tom. Left of my I'm screen. a bit older than the other Tom Hardy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he yeah. can aspire to your maturity one day. He can. Well, so I you're going to do us another tune, are you, man? Yeah, I bet, I bet he puts Magnum all over his messaging things. Yeah. I wonder what you was going to say. Good save there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got another song for you. It's very different. Um, yeah. Okay. I got a bit obsessed with things during lockdown i think a lot of people did and yeah. i've always been a fan of the, the the Bee Gees. and there's a wonderful album that came out barry gibb brought out an album called green fields and he does duets with other singers of the great bg songs and i got very obsessed with that album. i couldn't stop listening to it i can't recommend it enough to listen to and there's one old bg song i just love so i'm gonna sing that for you now Okay, we'll get out of your way and let you do your thing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, he's back with us. He's doing a Bee Gees tune and he's here, he's live, he's direct. It's Matthew Crampton. Thank you. There's a light, a certain kind of light that never shines on me. I want my life to be lived with you, lived with you. There's a way everybody says. To each and every little thing But what good does it bring If I ain't got you Ain't got you You don't know what it's like Baby, you don't know what it's like 
to love somebody, to love somebody the way I love you. In my brain, I see your face again. I know your frame of mind. You ain't got to be so blind, but I'm blind. Oh, so blind. I'm a man. Can't you see what I am? I live and I breathe for you. But what good does it do? I ain't got you, ain't got you, you don't know what it's like, baby, you don't know what it's like to love somebody, to love somebody the way I love you. What it's like, baby, you don't know what it's like to love somebody, to love somebody the way I love you. And the light, a certain kind of light that never shone on me. I want my life to be lived with you, lived with you. You don't know what it's like, baby. You don't know what it's like to love somebody, to love somebody. Way I loved you. Thank you. Matthew Crampton, ladies and gentlemen. That was lovely, Matthew. Thank you oh, very thank much. You. I was playing along with oh. my um with my uh with your with my uh well it's a tangle teaser and I was playing percussion with it. Oh. Well it's a good sing along song, lots of harmony potential. Yeah, like very, it. Nice. very nice. I love Poignant. It. Yeah. That's lockdown for me. That's lockdown. Um, let's see what people are saying. Um, Chrissy says, Brian says he's Solero. He's just got soaking wet and come inside. He shouldn't be outside eating Soleros in this weather. <laughs> um, but we're happy with his vote. Brenda says, love that song. Lovely. Thank you, Brenda. And I'm sure more comments will be coming along. We're going um, to we're gonna pop off and just do the results of uh, I Slowly of the Week. And we'll be back with you after Jeanette's poem, if that's okay. And we'll talk more. Thank you for a lovely See rendition. you later. Yeah, see you in a bit, Matthew. Thank you, sir. Carol says, love that song. Well done, Matthew. Um, yes. So over to our um, Ice Lolly adjudicator. She's there for your votes to count them up. She's going to tell us the Ice Lolly of the Week results. And Come over on, to you, please. Jeanette. Build it up, build it up, build it up. And the winner, no surprise, is... Magnum! It's Magnum! A, it's a landslide. Magnum <laughs> is your I slowly of the week. And I've just had a vote in by uh, Messenger, somebody I didn't realise was watching the show. Uh, mm. Charlie, thank you for your vote. Really, that should be 11 winning votes. Thank you, Charlie. And sorry that I mentioned you, um, Charlie Dimmon, earlier in the show. Not when <laughs> you were going to be coming on, but thank you <laughs> for texting in your vote. Um, <laughs> Magnum. Oh, <I> love that. <laughs> Magnum is the ice lolly of the week. Yes, I knew it would win, or I thought it would win, but I didn't know it was going to win. Who knows? The public have spoken, and now it will go into the hall of fame. It'll probably have like a magnum built into a in the pavement in Colchester town centre to say it won the ice lolly of the week on this day, the 18th of June 2021. I'm but, totally going to be eating chocolate as soon as the show is finished. Absolutely. Both Tom and Jeanette are going to be running to the shop on a skateboard, I on think. one of those scooters, the electric scooters that go along <laughs> the pavements really fast. 
and left outside random people's houses. Um, you've probably <laughs> seen them. Um, yeah. yeah, there you go. That is our I slowly of the week. I don't know if we've got any more big hitters left. We might have to move on what, to ice cream. What are we going to do next week? What of the week thing? You I don't know. Ice cream's coming up strong. Yeah, people have been telling yeah. me about rum and raisin ice cream, apparently. It's a uh, thing. Yeah, no, I know somebody that likes that. Barry, Barry Hamblian in his oh, 80s Barry. loves rum and raisin. Barry. Ice cream. Barry. No. It's, he's not on the show. He does. Felder does Facebook, but I don't think she watches the show. the show. She oh. forgets. Yeah, so what would you suggest, Janet and Tom? I was thinking ice creams next week. Mm. Then I can kind of use mm. the same jingle as well, which is handy. For me. <laughs> um, I think I already know what kind I like. So mm. I, I don't know if that's going to be one of your choices. Have well, you when I did, a test, I did a test thing recently, uh, user feedback on Facebook, and I had lots of choices, but no one chose the, what I would have picked. Um, oh. I won't tell you what it is, but nobody. Well, can I just say my best accent? Oid like a 99. What's that there? A 99. That's you, what I like. You want a nun, a nun? A 99. What accent <laughs> is that? That's really good. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's old Essex yeah. or Suffolk. Or it yeah, could be on, the border. North it's on the border, Essex, isn't it? It's Suffolk. rural Essex. Oid. Oid like a 99. Oid I'm like a 99. Sure. We should ask the authority on this, which would be Martin Newell. Martin Yule um, on accents and Andrew Phillips as well. Who's yes, yes, him too. I'd like to hear them say, I'd like a 99. So, are you you mean you want an ice lo ice cream with a yeah. flake in it and stuff on if there's any? Oh, you want stuff on nuts and, nuts and, nuts and chocolate sauce, and sprinkles, Ooh. everything. I want everything the raspberry sauce and the chocolate sauce. That's what I want. Mm. Really, Brenda says coconut ice cream is gorgeous but hard to get Ooh. hold of. Well, I don't know if they've still got any left, Brent, but I went to Lidl recently, very recently, and they had a choice. They had a short run of coconut ice cream, which is uh, very nice, I think, or uh, wasabi ice cream, you know, the Japanese peas. <laughs> I chose wasabi thinking we've got to try it. <laughs> well, we didn't get more than like a teaspoon, not even half, a quarter of a teaspoon tasting. Oh, it was terrible. Wasabi <laughs> ice cream, worst thing I've ever tasted. What, were you well, thinking? Tasted. what did you think it was going to taste like? I don't know. I just think I wasn't <laughs> thinking. I didn't yeah. really prepare just myself. Smear it on your sushi, surely. I'm not smearing anything on my sushi. I actually <laughs> know. That is well out of order to suggest that. I'm certainly not putting that ice cream on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm shriveling. Yeah. <laughs> I think we we sort of like said should we fry it in the bin and then sort of decide no keep it in the in the freezer someone might want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you, oh, bless you, me. Um, anyway, show. we should welcome Jeanette back to the stage for her poem of the week. It's got a stage. It's something short and sweet. It's my jingle. Of the week, and it's always man in me. Well, um, today's poem, this, this week's poem, um, is brought about by my dislike of housework. And I have a house guest at the moment, and I kind of feel that I should, if, if, like you, I don't know if you tidy up before somebody comes around. <laughs> I should have done that, and I didn't, but... Oh, well. So this poem is called Dust If You Must by Rose Milligan. And I think some of you will probably relate to this. Dust if you must, but wouldn't it be better to paint a picture or write a letter, bake a cake or plant a seed? Ponder the difference between want and need. Dust if you must, but there's not much time with rivers to swim and mountains to climb, music to hear and books to read friends to cherish and life to lead. Dust if you must, but the world's out there with the sun in your eyes and the wind in your hair, a flutter of snow, a shower of rain. This day will not come around again. Dust if you must, but bear in mind, old age will come and it's not kind. And when you go and go, you must, you yourself will make more dust. So that was Dust If You Must by Rose Milligan. 
Thank you and very much. If anybody wants any other poems read, just send in your suggestions. Or if you have a poet that you particularly <laughs> like, I like to have a look. What is? What are you doing? Tom's <laughs> dusting if he must. Think. <laughs> Come around here. <laughs> this place is just so dusty. I've got a black lacquer piano, and that's my gauge. <laughs> if that piano is, is uh, so dusty I can write my name in it, I should get someone in. Tom. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. anybody wants any poems, uh, if there's a poet that they particularly like, and um, do send me some suggestions, and I'll um, happily read through their poetry. Choose one. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jeanette. Lovely poem of the week. Oh. Let's see what people are saying. Um, Elmi, oh, so glad. Just in time for poem. Ah, oh, we're glad you're here, Elmi, and we're glad you made it. <laughs> oh, well, Jenny you. says, "Lovely, Jeanette. Very true." <laughs> Brenda, well read, Jeanette. I thought she was going to get her ice cream. She's still here. She's still here. I know. <laughs> maybe she's got there quick. Yeah. Um, maybe it's next door. Maybe it's next door. Elmi says, love it and agree. Thanks, Jeanette. Free kisses. What is going Ooh. on with the world with these kisses? I think it's the lockdown world as well. We give more kisses, don't we, in messages. Yeah. It's going to be like, you know, by, by next year, it's going to be like 10 kisses after a message. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful. I know that they've put the kind of lockdown thing back a little bit. But I am very hopeful that as soon as that's all over, I am going to be seeing people. I had lunch last week with lovely Carol, and that was wonderful. And um, I'm going to go and see Elmi. We've got this plan that when lockdown is completely over, Lorraine and I are going to go around to Elmi's, and we're going to drink wine in her garden and see her dogs, and her daughter hopefully will be there as well. I just want to oh, see lovely. these people and hug them. Yeah, lovely. So, um, soon, really soon. Yeah, on that point, I kind of knew it... <laughs> Uh, you can't you don't know but you kind of think that it's going to be put back and i always felt it was going to be put back and yeah. we've deliberately didn't put dates to our return in person events because i felt it wasn't going to happen like it is so whatever we were planning is going to move back four weeks but we will be back um in person we're here every friday till the end of the year anyway so you can keep in touch with us the newsletter if you haven't got a newsletter do let us know um and thanks everyone for sending back the feedback forms. They help us understand whether um, what we're doing is making a difference to people. Um, if you want to give us any feedback, if you're watching the show, you've watched the show and you enjoy it. And even if it, you get an afternoon's enjoyment or you hate it, just tell us, you know, we want to hear from you. Leave a comment, send a message, send an email to the warm and toaster club at gmail.com um but it's it's nice that we're all with you and we're able to connect with you it's really important to us so thank you um i should read more messages enjoyed that thomas green what is going on with him hold on i can't even <laughs> i can't even count how many kisses. Need a wider but, page <laughs> i reckon it's probably there's 12 kisses could be involved in that he's never coming back from that jeanette he <laughs> sent you all those kisses and he ain't coming back from that. If he sends you free now, you have a go at him. No, he's my little one. brother. We can do next, little life hugs and kisses. Next, he'll be putting emojis of little smiling rabbits or something <laughs> like that. What's that all about? Eh? No, he knows me better. There'll be musical notes and motorbikes. <laughs> oh, well. And 12 kisses from now on. Aww. Carol says, love your poems, Jeanette. A beautiful thank you, says uh, free kisses, Karen. Elmi says, Dutch give free kisses, and I am Dutch. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and the Netherlands that's, that's won at the football last night. Sorry, Jeanette, I cut you off. Sorry, no, I was saying that. That's Elmi settled it. Three kisses then. That's three it from me from now on. That's it. Lovely as usual, Jeanette, says Christine. And Charlie Mir, not Charlie, um, Jeanette. <laughs> uh, one well placed kiss is always best. I agree. Oh, it's where nice. you placed it. It's where you placed it. <laughs> you <laughs> placed it. Charlie, be careful what you say. You don't know, Jono. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know more about Charlie's well-placed kisses <laughs> uh, and where they put them on the um, uh, body. Um, I shall. I'll do some roving report of research, shall I? Yeah, do another one. Let's welcome back the wonderful Matthew Crampton. If I can get him calling up, Matthew Crampton's connection. Hi there. Hello. I Matthew. love the poem, Jeanette. Thank you, Matthew. It, very it nice. Your house looks very clean. Um, well, this little corner of it does, but you know what it's like. The rest is just made. <laughs> but you reminded me of that great thing that Quentin Crisp said about dusting. He said, I never dust, he said, because after three years, 
it never gets any worse. <laughs> I quite like that. <laughs> yeah. Some people are horrified of that. Oh. Do, do you, are you one for hoovering? Um, I'll be honest. At the, recently, I've not made much for anything because I could barely um, walk. So uh, I have relied on someone else to help me by doing that kind of thing can you when they were allowed in the house. Missed, you've missed a bit. Do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I go around the crutches. The crutches are very good for pointing out the bits that they've missed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, it's funny what you say about the hugs and kisses because, yeah, I mean, I live alone. I've completely missed hugs this last year and a half. And I, I think I'm probably more familiar in my social messaging than I was before <laughs> to re replace that somehow. Yeah. yeah. It's nothing like the real thing, though. I kind of no. starting to They're go starting. Out more and see more people. They are starting. A few friends are tentatively. So shall we? Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. And then, ah, oh, that's great. I mean, where do you, where do you like my... to take your kisses? Uh, place your kisses, Matthew. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if it was one, it's been the last year and a half. They've gone nowhere in person. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a probably a one or two X guy. XM, XXM on messages, and I don't go beyond two. M for Matthew. M. Is that a secret? Is what? that the Oxford? Matthew. Yeah. Matthew. Oh. Right. <laughs> it's my <laughs> complex <laughs> code of love. I thought that was, <laughs> I thought it was sex people or something. I couldn't tell. <laughs> well, we've had the X, X, zeros, M. I mean, hugs and the X. X, X. What's, a, what's an M? M? Yeah. <laughs> He's a swinger. <laughs> M from the left. That's how I broke my ankle. Now the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that other great line? It's a jungle out there, and I don't know how to swing. I love that. Oh, <laughs> it makes me wonder how you keep from going under. Uh, but Tom, uh, Tom, I uh, interrupted you. You was asking Matthew something. No, no, I was saying I can't believe none of you have had a hug with other people. A few, but not many. Just it, recently, loads, I had... loads of people have said, to, oh, "Are we hugging again and stuff?" Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. No, I've been allowed that... to hug since the seventeenth of May, I think. 17th century, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I was with a, I was having dinner with a, some good, really old friends the other night, a couple, and she, what big hug from Millie, lovely. James, who I was at school with, we go back that far, he sort of tentatively gave me an elbow. I mean, thank God not that Boris style over elbowing it, but a little <laughs> like uh, rugby elbow. Yeah, in that's all a bit weird. That, in though. the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I well, anything I gave Millie went to James anyway, so that's you know, if you have <laughs> one partner, they're all gonna get it. Thanks, absolutely. Leah, we got your message. She says, Mum, Kim Saunders wants me to say apologies. She got knocked off her Facebook app and can't remember her password. She says, oh. Lovely poem, Jeanette. Ah, oh, thank you, Leah. That's thank very you, kind Leah. of you to say, and thank you, Kim. <laughs> so, Matthew, you obviously you're you're sort of like convalescing, getting over <clears> your ankle operation you're not out there doing gigs yet and it's probably not got any plans for a while have well you funny enough i've been doing a lot of rehearsing recently because i perform uh, i've got this thing with a friend called olga who's a classical pianist and i tell stories and she improvises classical piano while i'm telling the story um and it's gone quite well but we've been working on a new piece which is based on a french story called the little prince and it's a lovely kid's tale that's very good for adults. So I've retranslated it and I've adapted it and I tell the story and she plays beautiful piano, kind of improvising, but she's such a good pianist. It's like, whoa, um, all the way through. So we've been rehearsing that hard and we've got a few gigs in November. <laughs> but um, we thought we'd rehearse now just to keep ourselves sane. Yeah, <laughs> get in early. Sure. Oh. I mean, you've got to, you've got, I mean, if you're involved in any kind of creative business at the moment, there's nowhere to make any money out of it or perform, but you've got to keep your hand in or else I think, or else you just, it's very tricky to come back then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm forever recording. I'm recording. Yeah. Album, so I know what you, you do mean. so much, John. It's amazing. Um, too much, too much, darling. Um, let's get you singing a song or talking a talk, whatever you're going to do next. We're, Pleased to have you with us. Um, time's running on, so I'm going to rush Tom and Jeanette off. Sorry, apologies to you two. Um, and I'm going to rush myself off the screen as we went. welcome for the last time this afternoon, Matthew Crampton. Welcome back, everyone. Are you up for another sing? You'll know this song and you'll likely sing it quite loud. Where a 
began. I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. Was it the spring? Then spring became the summer. Who'd have believed you'd come along? Hands, touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Sweet Caroline, good times never felt so good. Feel inclined to believe they never would, but now I think of the night, and it don't feel so lonely. We fill it up with only two, and when I hurt, hurt runs off my shoulder. How can I hurt when holding you? Warm, touching warm, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Sweet Caroline, good times never felt so good. So good, so good. I feel inclined to believe they never would, but now I sweet Caroline. Good times never felt so good. So good, so good. I feel inclined to believe they never would, but now I'm here. Sweet Caroline. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, everybody. Few. That was lovely. I was singing along. It's oh. got to be one of the biggest sing along songs ever, isn't it? Really? I think it is probably the number one sing along um, ever. I, I remember seeing a whole bunch of Romanian football fans were in London and they filled Leicester Square all singing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a lovely sight, I bet. Oh, in um, fact, the other day I did a, well, before lockdown, I did a gig with Olga, my pianist chum, and she's Russian, and we did it for a whole Russian audience. And they all they all sang along to it. And they loved Delilah, especially. <laughs> yes, Delilah is another big sing-along song, absolutely. Uh, that was fabs going down well with people. Kim's back on, and Elmi's saying, I'm singing along, very nice. Um Steve Brady, our newsletter engineer from North Carolina, says, Fab show today. Question, how do you rehearse improvisation? Oh, I just think you just be yourself and you trust your gut, I think, Steve. I'll what do you think? I'll give you a quick, boring answer. We have a number of characters in the story. We ascribe a particular piece of music to each character. So we prepared that. And then as I move from character to character, she moves, improvising from the theme that she's already prepared to the next one. So it's a mixture of preparation and improvisation. Oh, well, that sounds really nice. It keeps it Peter real. And the wolf with the different music. Peter and the Wolf, it reminds you of. Well, we do yeah. Peter and the Wolf, but unfortunately, yeah. and uh, we try to mix it up, but that's pretty set music. But we do play around with that a bit as well to keep it live. Nice. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah, sounds very interesting. Kim, uh, Keith, I should say, got to sing along with this chorus. Applause from Jenny, and she says, thank you, bye. See you, Jenny. Carol says, good choice of song, love it. Applause from Leah. Thank you, Leah. Um, Christine says, thank you for another entertaining afternoon. See you next week. Free kisses, one each for all of us. Matthew, you can borrow my one. I don't mind, that's okay. Kim says, one of my favourite songs. And Irene says, thank you uh, all for the newsletter and enjoyable show. Ah, oh, thank you, Irene and Colin. And thank you, Matthew Crampton. That's it with you, Mr. Oh, Man. Yeah. We, we're really pleased you're back. You're able to be with us. Yes, indeed. 
Thank, Thank you. you for your entertaining moments of loveliness. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It's such a joy always to join you. And it's lovely to be here. So thanks, guys. Keep getting well. Keep getting better. Um, and yeah. we'll catch up. We'll see you in later in the year, we hope. I hope so, too. And I look forward to meeting the audience in person again. Absolutely. We Can't will wait. get there. The in-person events are coming back. They just not put a date on them yet because the world's kind of strange. But we will get there. <laughs> Thanks, mate. We we'll speak soon. Bye, Matthew. Bye. Matthew Bye. Crampton. I only get rid of the artist at the end because I need one more part of the screen for the uh, for the uh, outro credits. Um, brilliant show, says Rosanna. Rosanna, thank Rosanna. Thank you very much, um, Duncan. Hi, Duncan. Just at the Aww. end, he says, "Hey, oop, one kiss. That's all you need. That's all you need to give." Um, and right back to you, Duncan. He says, "Always entertaining." Um, with an M. He's added an M there. I don't know if that's a weird thing. He says thank <laughs> Martin. Um, what does M stand for? What does yeah. it mean? I what does it mean? Know. I told you. It's a <laughs> six Keith, people what does thing. M mean? <laughs> um, I don't know. You have to ask Keith. Merlin, didn't know you was there. Glad you are. Stay well. See you soon, she says. Kim says, thank you, Matthew, for a great choice of songs. Skinny Boy Tunes. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Mr. Skinny Boy Tunes, if he's, not, he's called. Well done for a great show. Stay safe and happy. One kiss, all you need. Thank you, sir. Carol says, thank you for a great show. Brilliant. Great show as always. Um, thank you. Says, three kisses, Karen. That's us. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, John. Thank you. I know, what the M, I know what the M stands for. Go on. Magnum. Magnum. <laughs> Does. Of course it does. Kisses, hugs, and a magnum. Well, of course. Well, I mean, oh, how he's... much better that could you get? That he doesn't says... get any better than that. <laughs> he's added that it's a uh, Matthew. Do do do. Um, <laughs> thank you all, says Elm. We catch up um, now on what I missed. Bless you. Stay well, everyone. Keep happy. Keep Bye, well. Everyone. We'll see you next Friday at uh, one o'clock. Yes, we will. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye. 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 <laughs> We've all got a tale to tell Times were not always so But putting it all aside We made it through by and by It's warm and toasty in here Share our laughter, sometimes tears You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three Wrapped in a little white cloth -da -da. Cooking for hours in the old iron pot -da -da. There's a jam roly-poly for tea -da -da. Enough for you and dad and grandma and me What did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich Peas on toast Nothing could come close To bubble and squeak The day after our sun 